Okay. Good evening. I hope everybody is doing great tonight. I hope you guys have had a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous day. Um, I am still praying for everybody. I'm still praying for myself. Um, I must admit, I feel better today, a lot better. The last two days were really, really tough for me. It was like, I mean, extremely dark days for me. Like I seriously didn't know how I was going to um, come out of it. I didn't even know that this day would exist, but I thank the Lord that you get to go to sleep and you get to rise up to a new day. Um, and so that's what today felt like for me, a new day. Um, I didn't come on yesterday because I don't know, but for those of you that know my mom, um, unfortunately she had went into the emergency. And so, um, when I called, they said, and everything is okay. Um, they said it probably had a lot to do with her anxiety. And so I kind of figured with these videos and everything that her wonderful daughter is doing that probably that itself created some anxiety for her. So I actually um, took some time away from this and drove down to see my mom and give her opportunity to hug her daughter, lay eyes on her daughter. and. Um, hopefully, you know, ease some of her anxieties. Um, so if you do see my mom out there, please, please, you know, let her know, you know, that her daughter wants to, you know, you to just check on her and see if she's okay, meaning, hi, how are you doing? Are you great today? And just, you know, definitely extend to her that, um, remind her that I'm going to be okay because I am um, covered by the blood. And so I do feel like, everything is going to be just fine um, as far as I am, you know, concerning me. My scripture for today, Hebrews 10 and 26, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Um, and the reason I chose this scripture is because what we're going to be discussing is I have a question of whether or not this case um, just within its putting, um, just within how it was put together, uh, whether or not a, um, a conspiracy was involved. Because as you all know, I don't know how many of you guys actually went to, you know, go and actually try and pull up the case file yourself. Um, but I did mention, I believe I mentioned, I'm not for sure, that the case is under two different names. Um, I am going to try and block out her personal little information here out of respect for her um, although it is public you know it is public record but if you notice let me see let's look at the first the um, one of the main pages of the case if you notice on this one here I don't know if you guys can see that clearly but if you notice it clearly states State versus Ashley Woosley, um, Ashley Nicole, Nicole Woosley Wines. But if you, and it says that through several parts of the document, you'll see Ashley Nicole Woosley Wines through several parts of the document if you go and actually pull up the case. But, but in certain parts of the case, you're going to notice that it jumps from every now and then from an Ashley Nicole to a Let's see if I can bring it up here to a Ashley Marie Winings. Now, I believe I don't have that in front of me, but if you go and you look um, on my posting a couple of days ago, I actually took it and I wrote all of her aliases down on it. Um, and if you look under her aliases, none of her aliases are uh, Ashley Marie Winings. And so I have a concern with that because I did bring that uh, to the attention of the prosecuting attorney's team and share with them, you know, that, okay, her document or the reason probably one of the challenges we're having with finding the case or following the case is that we're dealing with different names, you know, and I also didn't understand 
you know, why is this name changing? And it's changing to a name that's not even listed as one of her aliases. And to me, now I could be wrong, but to me, that's, you know, um, falsifying documents. Um, and that's, and that's actually against the law. That's, you know, actually it's under what, 2010 of the Arkansas code, 554-122, filing false reports with law enforcement um, agency. And my question is, isn't the court a law enforcement agency? Don't the court um, enforce laws as well? And so if so, then doesn't that also lead into a conspiracy? And the reason I say that is because, and first of all, a conspiracy is a, it says a person um, conspires to commit an offense if the purpose of promoting or facilitating the commission of any criminal offense. Let me see. Um, one, the person agrees with another person or other persons that one or more of the persons will engage in conduct that constitutes that offense. The person will aid in the planning or commission of that criminal offense. And the person or another person with whom the person conspires does any overt, which means um, doesn't do it secret or hidden out in public. These are public records. Um, pursue of conspiracy, pursuance of conspiracy. Um, and so I'm just wondering, is that a conspiracy? You know, you have all of these names on these documents that have um, been involved with putting these documents together and none of them chose to correct the documents so that they would be um, correctly reflecting the individual who's responsible for um, for this accident or for this incident um, that we're speaking of in this case. Um, even Ashley herself, you know darn well your wonderful name is not I don't even know. It's, I'm just going to say this. You know it's not either Ashley Nicole Woosley Winings or you know it's not Ashley Marie Winings. One of the two. You are very clearly aware of that. You a grown woman. You know what your name is. You could have easily said, you know what, this is not right. That's not who I am. Because there's one individual on those documents who has, you know, who is being um, defamed, meaning defamation of character. They I'm pretty sure they don't want to be, you know, associated with a death. And that's not right for you to do that. You just, you don't make, you don't make right decisions, do you, honey? Something even as small as that, you won't even take accountability or take responsibility and say, you know what, that's not me. Unless you voluntarily will it went along with the mess because it hid your identity. And that's wrong. I know the prosecuting attorney is aware of it because I pointed it out. Not only did I point it out, I also put it in a document to professional misconduct. And I know that they got involved, they got in contact with him because he had to read over the documents in order to respond to it. And you still, with your wonderful self, didn't go and correct it for whatever reason. It's wrong. What if it was your name that was mistakenly put on a document involving a death or something? Would you want that on your name? Would you want that associated with your name? That's wrong. That's not okay. Again, unless you had an intention, unless you had intentions for something else. It was a strategic plan that was plotted out and you guys just kind of put your heads together and this is how we're gonna do it. And you guys all stuck with it. Because when I first originally mentioned it, I mentioned it earlier on. Not to one of you attorneys, but to. Additionally, I can't believe that the judges didn't even, you know, correct it. I can't believe they didn't call you guys on it. You got an Ashley Nicole, Woosley Winans, and you have a Ashley Marie. What do your social security numbers say? It's not included under your aliases. So, but that is, um, that was one of my major concerns because I felt like, 
I felt like in the beginning that having this information put before a judge and the judge in the middle of the trial realizes, you know, that this name is not the same throughout the whole document, that the judge would throw it out. That was a huge concern of mine. And that was the reason why I kept harping on it and kept bringing it up so that they can correct it. And for whatever reason, they chose not to correct it. Uh, let's see here. And same thing even with the amended. When I seen them, um, the amended that came later after I, first, um, after I mentioned it the first time, I thought the amended was for that purpose, but it wasn't. And um, even on the amended, they mentioned a aliases Ashley Booth um, uh, alias is two, Ashley Woosley, but they didn't even include a Ashley Winings anywhere on this. So, like I said, that was a concern. Um, the only the only offense they put on here was the leaving the scene of an accident with injury or death. Now, and as you know, they didn't go, they didn't move forward with that. And what I don't understand about that is. How do you not move forward with that? I mean, I don't care how many things change with this case. I don't care, you know, in regards to, I don't care in regards to the materials, you know, or any of the evidence or whatever in terms of his shoes, his socks or whatever that you guys left out on the scene and didn't take up originally. Or, you know, I don't care about any in regards in regards to that. If you say, okay, well, they tamper with the evidence and this and that. It doesn't take away the fact that leaving the scene of an accident with injury or death, it does not take away that. It doesn't change that. It That doesn't change at all. So I don't understand how you just dismiss that like, oh, he got up and walked away. No, ask my mom, he didn't. He didn't get up and walk away. I just, I cannot, I'm missing something there. And that's the reason I wish so much, I'm here, I'm live. I wish so much that an attorney, you know, somebody would drop a line and say, you know what, sweetheart, what you're missing is this. Because I'm pleading, I'm begging to be educated. You can call me the little ignorant girl. I don't care. Ignorant just means that I don't know and I don't. I do not know. That's what I keep saying. I do not know. I do not know why your system appears to be so screwed up. I do not know why you guys think that it's okay. Like we, we're going to be okay with you killing our loved ones. We love our fathers. We love our brothers. We love our sons. We love our daughters. We love our mothers. We love our children. We love our siblings. And so when stuff like this comes up, we need answers. We need answers. So that's the reason I'm here doing this live is because I didn't get the answers. I was seeking the answers. I was trying to find the answers from every which way and I never did get the wonderful answers. So call me the little ignorant girl. That's okay with me. I wear that badge proudly. But if you could be so kind, drop a line. Drop a comment and tell me, sweetie, you know what? What you don't know is this. What you don't know is that because I do not understand how you can take this case and then set it aside like something miraculously happened with this wonderful person leaving the scene of an accident. That doesn't change. It's, it's constant. That's a constant variable. It doesn't change. There's still a death. It doesn't change. So that's, I, I can't comprehend that. So please, if somebody has an answer to that, please be so kind to just come in on it. You can message me. I don't care, but educate me on it. I would really, really, really appreciate it. And when you educate me on it, I'll go and I'll educate my mom on it. I'll educate my brothers on it. I'll educate my children on it, my nieces and nephews, because we don't get it. We don't get it. And if you okay me to educate the community on it, I would share with the community, well, what I learned is 
that in regards to leaving the scene of an accident with the injury or death, and the reason they can just set it aside like that, although it is what it is, she did hit and kill a man, and she did in fact leave the scene of an accident with the injury or death, they were able to remove it and dismiss the case based on this, this, and this. Educate us on that. We don't understand that. We don't understand that at all. Because see, the thing is, looking at this wonderful piece of paper, they didn't even include the fact that she was intoxicated. So you can't, you know, you can't go back and say, oh, well, you know, it was because she wasn't intoxicated. So then they took it off. Well, they didn't even include that in the first place. So I still don't understand it. So if you can be so kind, please help me understand. Um, this is the sentencing order. Um, and what I found shocking about this is, as you all know, if you go back and you listen to Chef Ricky Roberts' um, conversation with my mom and I, when he came in, you know, so thrilled and excited to bring us this wonderful news about um, about pressing charges, he mentioned that um, this wonderful young lady had drugs in her system. But for whatever reason, it didn't make it to the document. In the document, I'm sorry, let me see if I can show you guys. In the document, and like I say, you guys can go and you guys know how to, you know, but in the document, you guys know how to go and find it for yourself at this point. Um, if not, then go back a couple of days or so to my page and it will show you exactly how to go through the system and check. But in, in, in the document, it says drug crime, no. So um, although to the family he shared, yes, he said the toxicology report says, but it never made it to this paperwork for whatever reason. And I can't speak on that because I don't know. Um, that, that information was never explained to us. It was never expressed to us. Um, as a matter of fact, it was never mentioned to us. When I went and um, made copies of these documents is when I learned that, um, that it never made, made it into the documents at all. No mention of it. So that's definitely a concern as well. Um, I believe in regards to this particular document, I didn't actually, like I said, I took my wonderful self to go visit my mom yesterday. So I didn't actually go all the way through these documents and highlight um, every one of my concerns, but those are some of my concerns that I've seen, um, seen on these documents. And like I said, go search the documents, print them up if you want to, you know, just so you can highlight or whatever. And you may come up with some amazing questions, you know, and concerns that you may have. Message me your questions and concerns. Maybe I missed something because trust and believe my head is so, you know, wrapped around this that when things are right in front of your wonderful face, you tend to miss it. So go look through it. And if I miss something, then please message me, comment, you know, and let me know. And I'll go back and I'll read and I'll research. And if, if it's that I didn't miss anything, but you feel like I need to better educate myself in something, then tell me this, girl, look up this right here and read about it. And I'll be glad. I'm a researcher. I'll read all day. So comment, you know, leave it and I'll research it. I'll look it up. I don't mind. I don't mind. I tell people all the time, will you please educate me about this? Would you please educate me about this? I'm not one of those proud individuals. I'm not one of those people that think they know it all. I am so open when it comes to knowledge. So please, 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 core knowledge in me because when I tell you that I want closure, I want to see change, I want to know that I know that I know that Elder Rada is going to be better, I want to know. I want to know so bad. Let me tell you, this is what got me a couple of days ago. I received a phone call 
And during this phone call, and it was from an attorney. As a matter of fact, I have had um, several different attorneys that I have talked to um, that have given me calls or either people have reached out to me and share with me that, you know, um, their attorney that they work for wants to talk to me or what have you. Um, I'm one of those people. I don't trust anybody. You can't just pick up the phone. I mean, you can pick up the phone and call me. That's perfectly fine. But all because you're on the other side of my phone don't mean I'm going to believe the words that come out of your wonderful lips because I believe that, you know, I believe that people have agendas. And I believe that in order to find out what on, what's on somebody else's mind, you got to call them and, you know, have that conversation with them. And so I don't believe a lot of people. I don't trust a lot of people. Um, but I have had a couple of, you know, conversations with different lawyers and attorneys. And if, if only, huh, if only I could share those, you know, and I mean, I, I can, because legally in the state of Arkansas, as long as one of the parties involved in the conversation, in case you didn't know, as long as one of the parties involved in the conversation, um, then it's okay to record it. Look that up for yourself to confirm it, but yes. So I can share the conversations, but I just choose, you know, I choose not to. Um, but you guys would be so surprised so surprised at the wonderful attorneys that you guys are dealing with. And yes, I, a couple of them, I have called them on their wonderful mess because that just, it just don't make sense. Just don't make sense. But anyway, I got a call and in this call, again, I have this wonderful attorney sharing with me to, you know what, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry you're going through this, I'm so sorry your family went through this. And, but then they point me in the direction of, instead of pointing me in the direction of who to talk to in regards to the situation, you know, and getting the appropriate um, body over it or organization or authority over it to look into it, they, share with me once again that there is money to be gotten here. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell people that my brother that my brother wasn't for sale. Neither was my father, who was also murdered. Our loved ones are not for sale. You don't get to kill them off and then pay us. I don't care if it's 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, for what? I take it and then what? You do the next? man, woman, son, daughter, the same way, instead of cleaning up your system, professional misconduct is professional misconduct. And as long as we take a paycheck for it, then that means that your wonderful officer who did wrong continues on and they do wrong again, because you know what? You're pacifying people. You're paying people to keep quiet instead of cleaning up the mess. That's not okay. That's not what fixes the system. Money is temporarily, death is permanent. We don't get them back. Yeah, it would have been easy, easy to say, you know what, go ahead. Give my nephews a check. Cut his wife a check. 
cut a check, cut a check. In 30 days, another death. In the streets of El Dorado, 90 days, another death, and another death. 120 days, more deaths being covered up. That's not the best result. You don't want your mess out in the open, don't do it. It's not okay. If it's not okay for the citizens to kill, then why do you think it's okay for you to? It's not okay. Just like money can't buy love, money can't buy justice. It's not buying justice. I wonder how many people are sitting here listening to this. And you know, you know your loved one had an open case when they died. But the case went away and you got a paycheck. You know your loved one was complaining. You know the words that they were speaking. You guys stop taking money for everything. You know when I wish I had it here and it's going to be a part of the um, it's going to be a part of the paperwork that I present to you guys. I'm going to show you guys what they gave us um, as part of the estate. And it's so funny because I thought that, you know, with it being part of the estate, the estate is something that you're doing on the behalf of the family. So why do you have an addendum on there that says that we can't further pursue any lawsuit and you want us to sign it? Again, educate me. I'm the I'm the ignorant girl. Educate me on why should we sign it? Educate me on if I'm reading it wrong, I don't understand it correctly. Cuz I don't understand why there's an addendum on it in the first place. See, I'm that person who don't mind doing homework. And when I say I'm that person who don't mind doing homework, I literally went and made sure because I was like, okay, maybe the state of Arkansas is doing something different. The reason these things don't match with the same name, maybe it's doing something differently. So I went to go and pull up a couple of other cases in the system. And now the case on the very, the name case title on the very front of the cases, they match all the way through. If there is a difference, then they may have added junior to it. Or maybe they had wrote out the whole name, middle name versus the initial. But as far as the, as far as the, uh, further than that, everything was lined up, decent and in order. Same person all the way throughout the file. But in this wonderful case here, it doesn't line up. When I go and I look at other states being distributed amongst their family members, I don't see an addendum on a lot of those estates saying that you won't further pursue a lawsuit or anything of that nature. What is so unique about this case? that the paperwork 
and the people involved are being treated differently. Even the person who came and picked her up from the crime scene, who they would generally call an assessor to the crime, but not in this case. Who's calling the shots on this case? And is there really nobody who genuinely cares enough to know, man, yeah, what is going on with this? How do you get a hit and run case where in one at one moment or one point they say, okay, because I, I'm sure I have it recorded if you go back and listen where the prosecuting attorney said, no, no, we're not going to, we're not going to take it to the, we're not going to um, take it to the court or file any documents on it until we know that we can, we know that we can prove it. But all of a sudden you couldn't prove it. Let me guess, you became as ignorant as I am now. Ignorant just means you just don't know, right? So maybe somebody can educate us both. Because at one point, you said you had enough. Because that was the song you were singing. No, 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 no. Not until, no, absolutely not until we get some hard evidence, right? What happened to your hard evidence? Who erased it? Who removed it? Who excused it? Who deleted it? Who lost it? Because as quickly as they removed all of that, I wish that they was able to bring my brother back. It's not about a paycheck. It's about a change. I don't know how many times I will have to say it. Ashley Woosley, why are you wrong? I can't even call you Nicola Marie because I don't know who you are. And obviously you don't either because you didn't even have the decency to tell them to correct the paperwork. Jeff Rogers, you were wrong. I still think about the possibility of the bloodbath at the prosecuting attorney's office. If only we was the wrong family. If only we was the wrong family. But we wasn't the wrong family. We was the right family. We was the right family. We're praying family. We do respect people. We do have manners. We know how to act. And yes, we do have dignities at all times. Even when there are animated people around us trying to escalate a problem. You were wrong. You were so wrong. Chef Roberts, you were wrong. You were wrong in your actions. And for your wonderful self to stand in my mother's house, knowing that she was grieving, knowing that she was suffering, I don't care what you had heard through your different interviews or watching those interview tapes or whatever, you had no right to stand in my mama's house and share with my mother that if somebody would have done what they were supposed to do by taking him to where he needed to go. While you pointing fingers, there's four more pointing back at you. 
had you done your job right? Had you upheld what you were supposed to be upheld through the sworn oath that you had promised to? This case would have been delivered correctly. You were wrong. And I pray in the future, if you remain in your position, that you don't tell another grieving family member, whether it's a mother, a sister, a brother, a father. You don't try and throw them under the bus. I don't care if it is for your own personal agenda. Have some respect for the dead and the grieving. You were wrong. And yes, I heard it through the phone. That's my mother. And it had it been yours, you wouldn't have wanted anybody to talk to her the way neither. So in the future, I appreciate just, some, just a little respect for all mothers, all children, all husbands, all sons, grandparents included especially in a time of grieving. Thank you. Again, I want to apologize to the good officers out there and the great attorneys out there because it's people like this that give you wonderful people that are truly, truly heroes in the community a bad rap, and I'm so sorry. But what's wrong is wrong. And I won't be afraid to say it. We'll move on tomorrow. Love you guys. Stay prayed up. Be blessed.